This is how we ride. This is how we do. So we do have some hope, ladies and gentlemen. We do have some hope for Jonathan Davenport. He is now going to be running a Spire number seven truck at Bristol. Now, a lot of people are happy. Spire Motorsports doing what they can. I think this is essential for Jonathan Davenport to have a respectable outing in the Cup Series. Obviously, he's going to be driving for a colleague racing in the Cup Series. It is a truck. Uh, Tyler Carpenter will also be in this race. Um, But I do think that it's going to be interesting to see exactly how well he does in this truck. But at the same time, you've heard people say, even with this uh, Josh Berry situation being thrown into the Chase Elliott car after all these years of success on asphalt short track late models, this was... That was the, the 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 Jonathan Davenport of asphalt super late models was Josh Berry, and he translated very well into the Xfinity series, competes extremely well. But then when he got into this Cup car, it's just completely different. These new Cup cars are like Trans Am machines. They're not like a truck. They're not like an asphalt super late model. They're not like a Xfinity vehicle. The Cup cars are just completely different in tires, suspension, geometry. they're saying it's more so like a road racing vehicle. So, is his performance in this truck going to dictate what his performance does in the Cup Series? Probably a little, but not a lot. And his performance in super late models on dirt tracks running five seconds faster than both this and the Cup car, is that going to affect how he does at Bristol in the truck or the Cup car? Hell no. No, not at all. These are slow, floppy cars with no suspension movement, no hookup, and technically no reason to even be on dirt except for some kind of circus purpose, which is what NASCAR has slowly, slowly become. It's so pathetic. You saw the the road race that happened the other day. I mean... Richmond with, uh, it, it's just slowly become a show pony thing. It's not about digging in the car and ripping the left front up in the air and throwing sliders and action pack like the dirt scene. It, it, it's just not. And these cars aren't supposed to be on dirt. They're, they're gonna, they're asphalt cars on a, a dirt surface. They're not dirt cars on dirt. So I don't know how much his dirt racing experience or success is going to help him on the truck or the cup side. I'm more so caring about the respect factor that his performance in this truck and this cup car is going to do for dirt track racing. Because they're going to project this as here's his shot in AAA and then the cup races, here's his shot in pro. Even though a dirt late model is five seconds faster with three to four times the amount of competition but it don't get the respect and recognition. So his racing career on dirt tracks will be heavily, in my opinion, manipulated by these people in these organizations to look like this is his, this is his judgment on dirt racing ability. Cause now he's going up against the best in the world in trucks and cup, even though there are a bunch of rich kids that have bought their way onto this stardom plateau that they're the plateau is telling everybody what's what and what isn't. When we know that the cup racers and, and the truck racers can barely make laps in our cars. Or like William Byron, who's setting the cup series on fire. He just spun out every single lap when he raced last year at the Kyle uh, Larson Late Model Challenge. Some of these guys are respectable. I think a Harvick or a Martin Truex or a Kyle Busch can jump into the dirt late model and make laps. Could they compete against the best drivers in the world? No, they would be in the B main. B main for sure, especially if it's a World 100 or some kind of field like that. That's where Kyle Busch was a few years ago when he raced for Jonathan Davenport. He was in the B mains, getting lapped in the A main by Jonathan Davenport in the A main at Bristol in the super late models going five seconds faster. But this at least does give Jonathan Davenport the opportunity to get a feel for slow, slow, floppy around the track race cars that these cup vehicles are. He's got all the quick reactions and reflexes and things you have to, the performance-based things that you got to have to compete on a high level of super late mile racing. You got to slow all that down because now you're going to be flopping around the track five seconds slower than an actual race car. And the unfortunate thing is when Bubba Wallace runs eighth and Jonathan Davenport runs 14th, 
Those 13 drivers in front of, of Jonathan Davenport will now be dubbed nationally as better dirt track racers than Jonathan Davenport. Hopefully this truck will help the results of Jonathan Davenport. We All of you in dirt late mall racing need to be praying to the dirt god, whoever that is, that Jonathan Davenport whoops their ass or does something real special. Because it's going to set y'all sport back so far back on the respect recognition uh, p- department. And I, I'm so sad for y'all. I really am, man. I wish y'all would wake up to what's happening here. Uh, stand up for yourself. Start telling Foxes and NBCs who you are. And getting the respect that you deserve. But this scenario, you just watch. You didn't hear about William Byron spinning spin out late miles left and right. The highlights of him and his little video that he's got on YouTube. He's all jacked up sideways. He looks good. They don't show that stuff. Let Jonathan Davenport spin out. Let him get beat. They're going to show it to the damn world just to discredit what y'all do on the dirt track. Y'all people better pray to the dirt track gods today and and, and you better hope. Jonathan Davenport whoops. Even though colleague racing can't even keep up with most of the tracks unless it's AJ, AJ Allmendinger at a road course. Although all those new cars are supposed to be the same. Y'all better hope. Y'all better hope that Jonathan Davenport does some Superman shit. In this Bristol deal, you know, it's it's sad. It, 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 I hope, I, I you better hope that he does good in one of these floppy, slow-ass asphalt cars on a dirt track. I've already seen this happen to Steve Kinzer, man. Y'all are about to experience it and you don't even know. It's all masked an opportunity. Oh my God, we get to be on the Big Daddy stage. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I think. Hopefully the truck does give him a little little bit of extra hope to give a respectable showing. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, like the video, comment below. What do you think? Is this truck really going to help much? Or is a guy used to racing a real race car with 900 horsepower, throwing sliders back and forth and left fronts in the air, not going to adapt to a slow, little bitty, uh, mode race car, uh, that is built to run on asphalt tracks and not even get sideways or it spins out or loses speed, has no sense of inertia or side by at all. And his performance in that race car is going to determine his ability on dirt tracks. And the risk of the world thinking that Bubba Wallace is a better dirt racer or any of those guys, a better dirt racer than Jonathan Davenport. That's the risk on the line. The only reward is if he wins. It's the only reward. And the other reward is I guess he gets his NASCAR shot. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to subscribe. Catch you next time. This is how we ride. This is how we do.